and welcome to the Unofficial Controller Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast, episode 227. Still got to pinch myself some mornings. With me, George, in this week, joined by Seb. Games Pass to my OAP Bus Pass. How is it going, Triple S? I didn't get the reference on that one, if I'm being honest. I wonder if that's a, a across the pond reference, but it's going pretty good. Listen, it, it, probably, <laughs> it is, let's face it, right? But it's going to give the worldwide listeners something to Google on their way home today. Okay, I like that. I like that. Just a little but, bit of deep research. I like that. Everything's going good. It's um, been a little quiet time in gaming, but the news this week sort of broke everything open and everyone's kind of in a tizzy, as you would say over there, I think. We'll about that. Keep that. Let's keep that wrapped up tight because yeah, I want to sure. unleash that like a frustrated flasher in a park in the news section. Um, before we get there, I just wanted to touch on a, a couple of bits because I don't think the audience are up to speed where you and RGT have been recording recently. And we kind of we broke bread with Pastor okay. Longhorn mm-hmm. in the end after abducting you at the end of PAX, and we thought he was a nefarious character. But it transpires his message is a solid one. So just to everyone out there, this is the Longhorn era. We're now living in his combine <laughs> in Texas. Um, we're higher members of the cult, apparently. We're upper parishioners, which gives us some freedoms which aren't afforded to some members of the cult. But we're all on board because as you ramp up to Christmas, Longhorn promises um, that come Christmas, New Year, is a bit woolly on the time. I don't blame him, though, because this has been millennia in the making, according to his story. We're going to go up. We're going to send up into a, into a, a UFO flown by Pastor Longhorn's extraterrestrial brethren. And so better remember this for the law. Talaknamort. <laughs> so I if those who can't read in between the lines, Pastor Longhorn has officially claimed to me once again, and George has now drunk the Kool-Aid. He's officially indoctrinated into the cult. <laughs> He's drunk the Kool-Aid, everybody. I I'm trying to just stick to water, everybody. He's officially drank the Kool-Aid. RGT is kind of on the fence here. We we kind of I, well, it's, I feel like he isn't here because he's hand washing. And he, I said to him, we're going to record the show. And he said, I can't, George. I'm busy. I'm hand-washing past the Longhorn ceremonial undergarments. Now, I'm reading between the lines, much like you just did. And I see that as he's basically rinsing out past the Longhorn's wife fronts. I, I, th- I think that's another cultural difference with wife fronts. <laughs> My friends, is that what is that what you just said? I can't believe we're here. You know, George is back on the show. Pastor Longhorn <laughs> often says to me, and you boys call this a gaming news show. I don't even know what it's <laughs> Longhorn. I don't even know what it looks like to anybody. Uh, to those new, it is a gaming news show. To those old, we've got a little bit of law back in the world. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so we, why fronts? I don't really know what they are uh, in America, but they're basically... Cotton speedos, cotton speedos. So they're with, like draws. Yeah, but with a little white Y on the front, where you could maybe, if you were of the male persuasion, if you wore them, you could pop out your your little uh, mini seb without oh. needing to pull your trousers down around your ankles. I do believe we call those the fruit of the loom. That's a generous saying for what. <laughs> <laughs> what I just described. Tidy whities as you as they say. Tidy whities but they need the little Y on the front so you can get little Seb or little George out, no questions asked. You need a you need to have a little wee wee. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. You just reach in, whip him out, do what you need to do, slap him back in, and you're away. I can't wait to see what the AI uh makes of this episode description. Let's get stuck in and give it something <laughs> decent for its algorithm, for sure. Uh, and especially seeing as Pastor Longhorn isn't happy. Um, oh, and you wait till we get to Ray. He has done a number on Ray. But before we get there, let's just ask you, Seb, to sum up your week in gaming. What have you been playing? Um, I've been playing a little bit of a uh, little bit of this and a little bit of that. A lot of the stuff is um embargoed, and we will be talking about this probably on the next time that you and I will be recording, and because it's more a couple of the bigger game releases of July in the end. Outside of that, though, 
I've been um, kind of dipping my toes into different, I guess you say indie games. One of them being um, Celico. Celico is like a almost like a old school retro Diablo style game, like an indie game. And you're it, into these at the minute, aren't you? Um, yeah, it's one of those things to where I'm like, I I think indies are going to be the new double A in in the sense to where I'm like indie studios are, have now gotten a hand at a technology that wasn't quite widely available at the time with the new unreal with the way with like yeah. the new with all those kind of like innovations and such like that. That it's we're opened seeing... up a world of tools to them. I've been thinking about this myself. It's strange mm-hmm. how we have these simultaneous thoughts if I may cut yeah. in. And it's it, it's kind of opened up to them a level of game they've probably never considered being able to make before. I mean, that's why we were kind of stuck in the 8-bit, 16-bit art styles. It was easy yeah, for to sure. produce without being disrespectful to their skill sets. Mm-hmm. But it was an art style that you could ch- you could chase that offered good gameplay mechanics, which is obviously what makes a good game. But I think budgets and abilities kind of hand them in at the lower end of the game scale. I think you're right. They've come out punching this year. They really have, man. It's and on the three D side of the fence, it's like you see all these like smaller budget titles, and they're punching well above their weight because animations have gotten cheaper. Um, I was able to test out like at packs. I was able to test out some actual like mocap suits and such like that. So I'm like, those have gotten a lot cheaper and a lot more affordable, mm-hmm. and you know, a lot more user friendly. Um, for the bigger chaps and the smaller ones alike. So I'm like, it is. It's <laughs> <laughs> a motion capture suit's not kind to your body. No, for sure not. It's like it's like a wetsuit. I'm like, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it is. It's it's remarkable because those things have allowed. Like, I think maybe I talked about this on the show like a while back. Um, Fort Solace was a game that came out last year, and it had like um some Tro- Troy Baker, the uh, the main guy from Red Dead Redemption Two, and yeah. um, a couple of other actresses and such like that. That was a five person crew as far as like the people starring in the game and the like the team around it was twelve, and wow. they produced something that I would pretty much equate as a PS4 level game as far as visuals and as far as like gameplay mechanics and such y- like that. Yeah, I concur with that. Yeah, so I'm like, it's like indies have become to that level to where like they're no longer just that 8 bit, 16 bit, almost like the I would say the cap was the Nintendo 64 PS2 era. Now they're heavily producing things that are PS4 era, sometimes even PS5 and and modern Xbox era. But like, yeah, it's it's amazing how well produced a lot of these indies are right now. Can I just say, I don't know what. I passed the Longhorn Scott is eating right now, but you are looking absolutely trim. You look like a V wedge stuck <laughs> in two legs. You are looking phenomenal. Have you been working out? Man, the only working out I do nowadays is walking my dog biscuit down like across the neighborhood and the UCP lift him up. How, yeah, how for it, sure. How is how is biscuit? <laughs> biscuit is a spoiled pooch, so to speak. He he's gotten to the point to where like he's only three years old i mind you so he's not even old he's just gotten to the point where he's gotten lazier about getting in the car where he like before i drive a crossover everyone so like before i'd open the back door of the crossover and he'd jump in and now he's gotten to the point where he'll put his upper body on the top of the crossover and then raise his back <laughs> leg like grab my butt and lift me kind sir <laughs> so i'm like <laughs> he's very polite for a hound isn't he yeah kind yeah sir. But I just thought they at, called us human flesh bag or food provider one or two. He, yeah, he looks at me like I'm the butler now. So, <laughs> so he's like, he goes to his water dish and like beats on it a couple of times, and then looks at me with his crossheads like, and then kind of like, like occasionally groans like the service here is terrible, man. Like, mm. but so I'm like, he's he's doing pretty good, and like walking him every day, and I'll occasionally lifting him up and such like that is basically all the other workouts I'm getting. But we walk we walk sometimes maybe like a mile and a half a day. Yeah, but you're not allowed out of the compound. No, nah, no, nah, for sure, for sure, it's just around the compound. So, okay. but yeah, it's just around the compound. But the heat here is like excruciatingly hot. So I'm like, you you sweat quite a bit down here in Texas. I think that's why Pastor Longhorn chose this site. I mean, it's very remote. I. Mm-hmm. I don't think you're getting out of here alive. 
no nah, no nah, it's you know like, there's a huge city uh aka dallas texas around us but you know to make it through that city we'd have to cross you know tens of thousands of miles of pure desert uh you know with excruciating heat around us it's almost the equivalent of like zelda when you're not like tears of the kingdom or breath of the wild when you're in the desert part and you're wearing the wrong clothes <laughs> and you just <laughs> and you see him burning up <laughs> That's a long horns on top of the water tower just watching us die yeah for sure for sure <laughs> any any other games that you can choose to talk that you can talk about that you choose to right now that you have been playing Really, though, those are the main ones. I think like um, I'm getting ready to do like a mid mid tier list of rankings and such like that. So I'm I'm kind of like gathering my thoughts on what's the best indie games so far this year and the best AAA single player games so far this year. So what's I think- it like? What's it like? Here's a question for you that I've been mm-hmm. meaning to ask. What's it like being last in the UCP Fantasy League? Man, it's rough. It is. Uh, oh, you I know, thought cause- no. I was going to tell you what it was like. Which- <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, if you're talking about like our fan one, I'm I'm pretty much down there right now. I took, you know, I always give Nintendo crap because like I don't like some of their business practices and they have weird decisions. But like I, they really did royally screw me this year because I I took a chance this year on in the fantasy league on the fan side of it because I was just like, okay, you know, Nintendo is going to either release that switch to or drop some release date so i went heavy on the nintendo side i picked like unannounced mario kart game i picked like unannounced oh no. mario game and then i picked metroid 4 and i was like none of those are coming out this year so they so i'm like <laughs> and then all the people you know like the fat zen geese of the world and such like that counterpicked me and so i'm like i can't even drop those i'm stuck and locked in those all for the rest of this calendar year for the I fantasy league so i'm like those are already zeros across the board. So I'm so like, Pat I'm Zangief, playing from behind. Pat Zangief was in line to win won last year's fan league. Mm. And he's now, his prize was to compete in the presenters league. Yeah, for sure. Who's looking like they're going to uh, pop the top this year and, and make it into the big boy league? It's, oh, okay. So I'm like, the big boy league, we, it's, it's a four man race. So there's really, it's really no one, like one person's the heavy favorite. It's, it's pretty close on that one. Um, on our league, you know, like it's it's me and Zangief, and it's not even close on the y- y'all are so far behind. It's y- it's not even close. But to be honest, Wait, Zang- hang on a <laughs> minute. Even- no, that can't be right because I picked Princess Peach. Yeah, you remember how Nintendo screwed me? <laughs> like, he, it kind of got you too. They wouldn't do me dirty like that. Yeah, I hate to I say. I think it, I but- even went in and dropped Death Stranding too. Yeah, I don't think that. Yeah, I think I did I think homework. It, <laughs> I, I went back off after the show. I, I I got real. I think Hideo is gonna do you dirty on that one as well. But but yeah, regardless, it's like yeah, this year because the release date is so the release dates on some of these bigger one bigger titles are so I guess you could say nebulous, except for like the back end of the year. It's been very much if you can get those double a are the indie games to to win you over you're going to win this league this year but right now it's you know fat zangief is doubling both of our scores george in in our league doubling something's gonna have to be done about this uh at this point it'd take two it'd take a rgt and bobby combining their scores and then you adding your score on top of their combined score and you'd still be behind 20 points the man, the man is a powerhouse when it comes to these things. Okay, so powerhouse. I think he was going to end up being the main host of the show. That was his prize. I get to retire early. I just no, 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 no. He he's going to make you stay on for a tw- a twenty year time limit. Is is what I heard. Absolutely not. One thing I'm glad about <laughs> Pastor Longhorn coming on board is that the 4K takeover, the hostile takeover, has been absolutely nosed into the ground. Pastor Longhorn has used his financial acumen to enable us to, you know, get you on the team as well. Mm -hmm. He's secured Mm -hmm. your services. He's killed 4K. Mm -hmm. But one thing he's not been able to do is beat down the Mexican streaming lord, El Buccio, who actually has the holding commanding share of the UCP. Not even 4K could get rid of El Buccio. 
do you think Pastor Longhorn and Tinactons can... Uh, that was the what I remember saying as the alien name. Um, if you've got a rewind button, you'll realise how bad I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, you know, like in the, the grand scheme of the lore of the show, I do think Pastor Longhorn's looking to the future. And I think there's a company out there you know, the the company out of the fur case, you know, dying by decaying body, there's going to be a phoenix that rises from the ashes later this year. Later this year, the Astro movement. And, a- and when the Astro movement comes, Pastor Longhorn's going to keep an eye out on them because they may try to buy out by his shares of the UCP. And it might be. And I, you know, I'm not going to spiel on this show because Pastor Longhorn listens, but there's a man by the name and with three initials with three initials who might just be the leader of the astro movement and you know we'll see uh pastor you know, longhorn listens i think pastor pastor longhorn listens to a lot of things because he has to be on top of it you can't let the cult go astray so you well, that's, have to that's that one listener that explains all the stats so we've yeah. made it yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> made the one listener from el paso texas is pastor longhorn <laughs> keeping us in check basically but oh, no wow. it, but yeah it's it's going to be to go to get back on track here though it's like the the way the the way the indie market is looking like and as far as like the dam is going to burst as far as the triple a market indies are probably going to carry us after next year because you know like when triple a companies um, trying to figure out budgets and everything like that and everyone check everyone's like releasing talent left and right there's a lot of those release talents that are going on and making their own studios and making their own you know, markets and making the market work for them, so to speak, and trying to strap on their entrepreneur, you know, goals and dreams and such like that. It's like, that's going to be the, that 2027 through probably 2030, that's probably going to be the gaming industry. It's like a lot of indie studios where, and then maybe like two to four major AAA titles a year is what I'm guessing, because everyone's, the, the budget thing is scaring everybody the market is crashing around everyone and it's almost like old school Hollywood. You remember like I think it was, was in 1930s when there was a big, um, a big burst in, in like the spending habits of Hollywood and everything changed. Mm -hmm. It's, it's video games. It's like they're hitting that age and they're hitting that same problems to where I'm like, the dam is going to burst eventually. So I think, you know, I'm just gearing up and being an indie person now, and yeah, and and trying to keep my expectations on that indie level for the foreseeable future. But yeah, I think like GTA is going to be that la- probably the last big over two hundred million dollar video game that we're probably going to see for a while. Oh, and the rest, you know, I can't yeah. wait to see the number of monies that they spent from the shark cards and all that uh, <laughs> drivel on. I mean, I'm grateful to them because they're going to mm. deliver us a great game thanks to kids literally stealing from their mums and buying shark cards. Off the back of their success, we're going to get, hopefully, an absolutely barnstorm in GTA. I'm going to quickly yeah, fill so. you in on what I've been playing because it's not that exciting. Um, I've gone back to Wrestling Empire on the Switch. Um okay. I've been away recently, and as much as I was thinking of taking the portal, the idea of getting there and finding out I couldn't get it working was enough to make me go, no, let's scratch back to the Switch. So I took the Switch, had some fun on that. Witcher 3, didn't get to play it a lot, to be fair. I was a bit knackered. Uh, And then I've been playing some Farming Simulator on the portal. I've been playing Uh Helldivers, (laughs) and I've been replaying Cyberpunk on the portal also, which has been actually quite a nice experience. Is this your? Did you finish Cyberpunk when it first came out? Or are you? I did. Re- I did yeah. Okay. Did. Are you I playing Phantom Liberty right now? No, I um, I'll just see if I still kind of like the game. And so I started a different okay. origin story. Not that it really makes any difference whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was nice to see some of that footage that I'd not seen before. You know, the first two minutes of footage really that kind of shows your lifestyle and where you've come from. Were you a nomad this time, or were you like yeah? A I chose to be kid? a nomad this time. I okay. was one of the city boys before, mm-hmm. and I can't remember whether I was like one of the corporates or whether I was just you know a mere a street kid or a co- or corpo. If I remember, yeah, correctly. I can't remember last uh-huh. time whether I picked street street kid or corpo, but this time I definitely picked nomad. 
I, yeah, like I say, it doesn't really make any difference, really, does it? You know, when you first play the game, you're like, oh, yeah, this will make a big difference. Wow, it's three games here. Absolutely not. Um, it, it, I will give them credit, though. It does, they do, like, follow through with their, um, the dialogue trees and such like that. Like, that's where do. it actually imp- it impacts more it than the second does. time, I did notice that a lot of the dialogue that you say, no matter what you say, it's going to end up a certain way, pretty much. Well, the NPC's answer is the same, and it fits both questions. Mm-hmm. I noticed that this time. I was like, oh, I'll pick this one. Same answer. Mm. It's feeling a little bit Mass Effect-y. I, I never played the game for the dialogue trees, although you know I know they're there and they're working. I kind of played it for the setting and for the... Do you like it still? The environment. I, do you know what? I liked it more. Um, I played it on PS4 or very early days PS5, and... I really enjoyed the game. I didn't have any mm-hmm. issues. I think we spoke quite recently about this, and I didn't, you know, have any massive issues. I had a couple, but nothing to really cry about. More funny than anything. Um, and I just find that the PS5 adds just another layer of granularity to the city that it was kind of lacking before. Felt a bit empty. You know, there weren't the multi-level street cars flying around like we've seen, uh, we saw in the trailers. I mm-hmm. opened V's apartment, looked out the window, and was like, ah. That's yeah. more like what I wanted to see from this game. Um, and for the most part, the, the streets feel busier. That felt more interesting when you were driving. The controls on the dual sense felt really good. You know, you got mm-hmm. feedback. It did make driving the car a little bit more harder work than I remember. But, you know, <laughs> it kind of pushing back on the accelerator and bits and bobs when I don't want it to. But no, other than that, absolutely brilliant. A little bit of hell divers. George, do yourself a favor before we continue. By by the Phantom Liberty expansion, like the Idris Elba fe- like featured Phantom Liberty part of it changes that game up. I was like, thinking of now I've replayed it and I've re-downloaded it. Well, I've not replayed it, but I've started replaying it. I have been toying with that. It's on the mm-hmm. horizon. Mm-hmm. I don't see anything else to buy at the moment. So Phantom if Liberty you can get that for a, a a cheap twenty, what did y'all say, twenty quid over there, twenty twenty pound? It's actually quite erotic when you say twenty quid. Yeah, okay, thank you. 20 quid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I I've seen it, it's 25, it's 25 books right now, just to move it back to the global currency. Okay. Uh, and I still think that's probably a worthwhile price. Um I I like I say, I'm gonna see how it goes and then I'll I'll cut into that a bit later in the day. They give you three new endings and then three new endings based on how you play it, and then they give you a whole new skill tree. Like there's a whole separate skill tree and then there's like a whole nother part of the map that just opens up and it's not and that map is so different because it's some it's more dense and the like and the equipment that you get from that map, the the stories that come out of that map, the actual like villains and and people out of that map is like those are really good. And then it they give you a story that has grander consequences, I feel like. And there's Probably the most, I think in, I think there's like set pieces that, or set piece missions that are really good in the baseline game, especially when you're doing like the first major heist is really good. There's one mission that that I think it, that's kind of like kicks off Phantom Liberty that really hits and hits that hard sort of like, oh, I they really thought about every single nuance of this set piece. And I think like I think you would really enjoy that one. That like Night okay. City, yeah, it, it transforms that game completely. Consider it bought. I mean, man, they add slow motion to to your movements now. I'm like, so cool. I, I'm you know, like I say, the universe is great. I think I needed some time between finishing it and now, um, mm-hmm. just to sort of scrub the memory banks clean. But yeah, very, very excited by that. So on the news that I'm buying DLC for a 400-year-old game, um, <laughs> we better break out some real news. News, we scour the very darkest region of the internet to bring you the latest stories. First up, uh, I'm going to lead with this one, and then uh, we'll see what you make of this, and then we're going to okay. skew into this next bit of news that people have been wrapped up tight on since the top of the show. But uh, King Boo, would you believe King this? Boo. King Boo finally has competition. Nintendo yesterday revealed a disturbing new project simply titled Emio, 
And although no information has been shared about it just yet, new ratings spotted with Nintendo Australia YouTube trailer upload seem to have shed some light on just how horrific this experience will be. Moving away from the friendly, friendly image we're used to see, used to seeing. Look out, country <laughs> bunky boy kicked in. Uh, used to seeing associated with Nintendo's products, Emio will include strong themes, violence, and uh, suicide references. Make of that what you will. Huh. Uh, Podcast editing suite, and is rated MA fifteen plus according to Australia's classification board. A separate rating goes into the title a little bit more, uh, although the detail contains not much, just violence, cruelty, domestic abuse, and suicide themes. Once again, Nintendo hasn't actually shared any proper information about what to expect from this new project. The original announcement has the hashtag "Who is Emio" attached to it, and the official trailer's ending features some Japanese text, which roughly translates to "Smiling Man." In some related news, this all times in with the discovery Bloober Team, the same developer behind games like Layers of Fear and The Medium, is working on a title called Project M for Nintendo platforms. Seb, Nintendo's finally gone dark. They've been associated with other horror-themed games. I think the one that probably most people will say... In fact, I see the meme on. T- I see the meme of um, Leonardo DiCaprio holding a can of beer, going and pointing at the screen. That's what a load of people just did because they're expecting me to say Eternal Darkness, but they didn't make that game. But they did publish it on their console, so you could say it's exclusive. Well, it is exclusive, but it's not full ninty. This doesn't look like full ninty, but it's a swerve into the darkest I've seen them for a long time. King Boo would run in fear of Meo. What do you make of Emio? And are you so scared of that that you're going to cuddle up to Pastor Longhorn tonight? Or are you okay sleeping in the, the bunk beds with the rest of us? I am going to hide in the kitchen where I can cuddle up the sack potato sack, uh, the sack potato. You know, like, I feel like that's, <laughs> I, I feel like that's, that, that's the happy medium there. I can't expose weakness in front of Pastor Longhorn or else I'll get punished. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and I can't. And the rest of the guys are just looking for a way to knock me off, so to speak, so they can be Pastor Longhorn's number two, number right hand man, so to speak. So I need to I need to go cry in silence. But I think this is I really want to see the official announcement for this because you're right. This is like this is news that I did not see coming, especially from Nintendo. And I I want to see how they can actually nail like horror and such because that's not really their forte. But that said, I I want to give them credit because I've been saying for a long time I want to see innovation from them. I want to see something different as opposed to that same old, same old, same old of like the yeah. non the linear games that they have or like the unstory centric games that they have. It, I want to see something different than that and this what? this with the themes that you said i think it's leaning towards what, what, I what frustrates want. me most is they've got some really talented people there and they seem to have them perpetually redrawing mario's hat which from an artist's point of view would be really frustrating why not allow them between games the chance to do a little bit of something something to keep their eye in this emio seems like a great opportunity to do that there's so much talent wrapped up in nintendo hq that will only ever make Mario, Zelda, or some other associated tat games. And although they're great games, objectively, you know, they're all going to get 9 out of 10, aren't they? No problems at all. But imagine if they could bring that magic formula of gameplay, tightness of control, slick UI, all the good stuff they're good at. And it's a tried but true. Yeah. Yeah, bring yeah. it home with a mature story. I'm not asking for Mario walking around with a gun, crotchless chaps. What I'm looking for I is... Can't help. <laughs> <laughs> a, a new character or a new set of characters um, that they can use for more mature games. Obviously, we've seen the N64 mature icon appear so we can play such gory, visceral games as Turok and Perfect Dark. Why, why they need to be in the mature setting considering it looks like you're hacking up something. Those games make Minecraft look 4K. I don't think we need to worry about a little bit of gore. I suppose if you're happy with Nintendo's current new potential chosen direction, we're excited to see where that goes. Please sound off in the Discord uh, what you think MEO is and, and quite where you think it's taking them. 
Seb, why don't you give us a lowdown on this next bit of news? Because this is the reason me and you got out of bed this morning. We kissed past a longhorn on his left and right cheeks, respectively. And we stood up and we pushed forward into the combine and we stumbled across this bit of news. And we had some very heated conversations around the canteen over some cactus milk. And this little snippet. Take it away, sir. I'm sorry, everyone. Pastor Longhorn is forcing me to do this. And the wee hours of the morning here in the UK and Microsoft decided that was the right time to announce sweeping changes to the Xbox game. No, man, you've got to do you've got to do that. You've got to do that headline. Oh my goodness. All right, my bad, Pastor. Um <laughs> my God, just leave him alone. He's already dead. My God. <laughs> In the wee hours of the morning here in the UK, Microsoft decided it was the right time to announce sweeping changes to the Xbox Game Pass system. The <laughs> The service console tier is no more, no more indeed, to be replaced by the Xbox Game Pass standard. While both the existing core and the ultimate tiers are getting price increases. What's more interesting here, at least that in our humble opinions, is that the new standard tier of Xbox Game Pass and Microsoft has provided a Game bit more Pass. Game Pass and <laughs> has provided a bit more detail on the new Game Pass option, with even more information coming, quote unquote, soon. Here's what the team has to say so far. Xbox Game Pass standard gives you hundreds of high quality games to play on your console it also features all the benefits of game pass core such as online console multiplayer and select membership deals and discounts including up to 15 percent off of select games some games available on xbox game pass ultimate on day one will not be immediately available on xbox game pass standard and may be added to the library at a future date xbox game pass standard will be available in the coming months we will share more information soon, end quote. So we're hoping that in the coming days, Microsoft provides a little more details about what some of these games are. Meanwhile, in regard to the lack of the day one releases, we want to know these things. Are we talking first party Xbox games only? George, I got to ask you. Let's After get stuck here, into this. We've chucked enough. We've chucked enough factoids out there. Yeah. Um, some developing news this afternoon that the games, the, the day one, day and date games are said to be reviewed on a day, on a case by case basis. It was not that long ago, Seb, that I wheeled in here and said, if it wasn't for the leaks of the multi-platform games, we got Hi-Fi Rush, we got Sea of Thieves and we got well, Vowed or no, what did we get? Oh, I can't remember now. Gosh, write in, let me know the other game that I've missed. Was it ground? Are you talking about the four that went to other consoles? Grounded, and then we got Pentiment, wasn't it? Was Pentiment. It Pentiment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Don't write in, I remembered. Um, write in anyway, everyone. Write in anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what an idiot I am. Uh, and I'm fine with all of that. So they did that. Bit of a snafu, if I'm honest with you. You probably didn't handle it very well. Then they went and blew the doors off of it with their great um, showing. That they where they showed all the new games that were coming and the highlights and the things that were coming up. I got all squiffy about flight simulator. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I think you're missing something. I think you're missing something here. So Xbox has had an up and down year all year. You remember the Xbox Developer Direct that was that started this year? Yeah. Well, I was what I was gonna say is I actually thought, despite all that stuff that kind of went on, I actually thought they managed to steer the plane from a trajectory into the ground to actually gain in altitude again off the back of their uh, showpiece that they did with the get with the new games that they announced. You and I both said, wow, actually, do you know what? I think they might be turning this round. If it wasn't hold on, for hold that. on, hold on. The reason why I brought up all this is because every single time that they had a win this year, they've yeah. turned and step on a rake. They, every single and, time. And this is what I'm saying. I cannot believe. They had some bad news at the start of the year. They turned it around. They managed to massage it, came out of it looking good. Came out of it releasing games on other consoles with not too much egg on their face. And even we gave them a little mark on their report card saying, you're doing all right. You know, you're going to be okay. <laughs> and then this. I how, much is, how much is the price increase over there, by the way? Oh, let me get my... Uh... So I'll I'll do that in a sec. I was, and, and this is where I'm at with them. Like, why do they keep 
doing this to themselves? Can they not see the optics involved? Nah, man, it's it's crazy. They're like I I'm watching the boys pretty heavily, and they feel like Vault, you know, from the boys, where like every little thing they do right is also like negated by something they're going to have to cover up or like do PR management for. It. It's like you know. W- it, like the developer direct and then they closed down um a lot of their uh, a lot of their studios including tango games works that was actually doing really well for them the only not like i guess you could say game of the year or at least you know the only award-winning studio from them for the past what two or three years at that point that's not forza then you have like all these other situations that come up the feel uh, the phil spencer interview and such like that the sour bond interview didn't go well either so i'm like all these things go right and then go wrong go right them wrong and honestly game pass here i think went went up three dollars for ultimate i think it's 17 but i'll, for I'll, let me, I'll do you the full i'll do you the full price jumps here with, okay um with the different um currencies available so the xbox games pass ultimate tier will jump from 12 pounds 99 14 euros 99 well you yankee doodle dandies king of the xbox console and it's home territory paying 69 16.99 a month which mm-hmm. is quite the increase um that they're jumping to 14.99 uk so that's two pound increase 17 dollars 17 euros 99 that's what a three dollar increase and the our american cousins including you triple yeah are going to be going up to 19 dollars 99 from 16 20 dollars objectively still a good deal yeah for sure if you sit and think about it and assess it on the cold light day and if rgt was here he'd be riding a moped called xbox through the studio wearing past a longhorn ceremonial hat um but he's not here so i mean you can have a little bit more of a steady away conversation x pass games pass xbox games pass is still objectively a good deal is it that's what they should have called it x pass that's exactly what they should have called it. Yeah. Checks in the post. Cheers, Uncle mm-hmm. Phil. The <laughs> so X Pass Ultimate, which is a great name. Yeah, for sure. Um, does it matter to you that you would lose the day and date games? I mean, you know, what's keeping someone locked into Games Pass? Is it the library? Is it the new gear? Is it the no questions asked, play what I want when I want? You know, come help me understand objectively here as a consumer they do just enough to keep everyone involved like there's enough indies for like the the hardcore gamers to really just digest into and then there's just enough releases they kind of trickle it out a very smart way where there's enough big releases that come out every once in a while for a a mainline casual gamer to get get used to or get excited about. There's like when you think there's nothing on there, they trickle, they put a, a new Diablo on there. When there's yeah. when it's been a cold spell, like since Diablo, I don't think there's been any big major games. I think maybe Lords of the Fallen was like the ma- most major one, but I think mm-hmm. that that's kind of super niche though. Uh, I'm like. Then they announced Call of Duty is coming, and that gives you something on the horizon to look forward to. MLB is another one. Oh, you like MLB? We we just put that on there. So it's like every other month there is a big enough title to where like a specific fan base is just going to reinvest into their ecosystem, mm-hmm. and and when you do that, it's like you don't necessarily have to have home runs on the on the you know first party side, except you know, for the hardcore gamers who really care about that sort of thing, who really want to really be involved in that. I think like the people we that talked- have carried the console on their back since the original one launched. Yeah, for sure. I think we talked about this last week um, or maybe it was a week before where like Xbox is now coming to fire TV. Yeah. To fire TVs. I'm like, they're they're They've been on Samsung TVs and there's rumors that they have the dongle coming out. They were, they're trying to, become more of an ecosystem and spread themselves to further further their reach and i think like it's smart of them but it also kind of alienates their core audience a bit who really i think that's the thing boxes to me that's the if they hadn't curried this hardcore community that they've really built on since the original Mm -hmm. xbox they actually managed to explode on the 360 that they just about kept happy through the xbox one 
they arrived with their chest puffed out at the Series X's stats. On paper, it's an incredible machine. In fact, it is an incredible machine, but on paper, it's got the PS5 pretty much covered off. But they you arrived... see all these digital foundry videos. Well, where, like, I didn't want to yeah. get I didn't want to go down that rabbit hole, but let's just get in the way back machine and kind of sell it how it is. Yeah, for sure. I think as an Xbox gamer, you came into the Series X generation feeling pretty punchy, actually. Similar-ish launch titles, you could argue, some exclusives on the PlayStation that, you know, maybe shifted the optics up a little bit because it's more of a generic um, accepted star, Mars Morales, Spider-Man, kind of 1.5. It was always going to be some interest, Demon Souls, absolutely. Anyway, Xbox comes out the gates, probably with a copy of Valhalla under its arm, feeling like they'd made, they'd made a good choice. And Games Pass bolstered that choice because whenever things got a bit dry, they could dip in there and they could play a game. For the original Xbox owners that have come all this way, is there much for them in Games Pass? Not really, because they've played those games. They played those games when they launched on the original console. So the only thing really for me keeping them locked in for their loyalty was the was the day one and day one and date games launching on Games Pass. That to me was something that would make me as a long term fan go, yeah, do you know what? Do you know what actually, Bill, Phil? I've earned this. This feels great. We're in this together. Give me the games. Keep them coming. But they tried to reorganise this some time ago with the whole restructuring and, oh, well, you don't need this to play online, but you need this mini package, but you don't need that package. And they've tried to rearrange these tiers before. That didn't work out. They tried to put their titles on other consoles. That didn't really work out. turned out monetarily for them, but the damage done to the brand, I think, was immeasurable yeah and offset that um who's your favorite sports team in in the mlb oh yeah probably gonna have to say the rangers um, okay who's your favorite sports team in soccer or football as y'all say over there nfl no like actual like y'all's version of football i not don't like... really know anything about soccer oh okay so you're just just more of a baseball person i didn't know that um <laughs> formula <laughs> one baseball they're probably my go-to's Okay, so like sports, what I was going to get at is like sports, especially teams, have this uncanny way of selling people hope for the future. Mm. It's like they Xbox is kind of mimicking that model a lot to where I'm like you they get just enough to uh, to where like they give you hope that the ship is going to like turn around They're and like in for the Rangers for the long time, the longest time, you know, we go through a drought, but then we start rebuilding and start rebuilding. And then like, oh, next thing you know, we're contending in the, we're contending in the playoffs. Oh, now we're winning the World Series. It's like yeah. they we did everything the right way of of like we rebuilt everything grandly. And then we kept giving people hope. We built a new stadium that there's a whole lot of seeds there, but then you see like franchises, so to speak, like uh, I guess the Lakers and the Cowboys and, and baseball and football respectively here to where they give player, they give people hope each and every off season. And it gets snatched away because they make foul moves during the off season as well, or and during the regular season. And that's kind of what Xbox is doing here. It's like, you see every little step they take, they all they always have that rake right behind them that they turn around and step on. And it's like, I think that they make good games and then they make good acquisitions and then they turn around and do something that isn't a good PR move. If anything, they need to like fire the PR department and start over. It's like mm-hmm. they need because they need to go. They need to hire a brand new PR people. And then after every move, Give them a calendar thing of like saying, hey, we're about to mess up here, but we need something to kind of deaden the blow a little bit. Because can you imagine like this news today or this news this week, if they announce, OK, we're raising the game pass prices. But then they had also like they give you the carrot on the stick of saying, hey, like we have 50 of the Activision Blizzard games that we're adding to game pass this month. Boom. It, it lessens that blow a lot, you know? All of a sudden, you're looking at something that was a PR car crash, Mm -hmm. and it's looking like the second coming of Christ. Imagine if they put the Call of Duty collection on there today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. 
Do you like video games, podcasts, and reminiscing? I'm actor, video game writer, and total sweetie pie, Connor Savage McCabe, and on each episode of Call Me By Your Game, I sit down with a guest for an intimate look at a special game from their past. Did you and your dad beat Spyro the Dragon over the holidays? Or was Halo 4 the one thing that united your roommates during your senior year of college? Stories like these are what Call Me By Your Game is about. From video game content creator Janet Garcia to Hades voice actor Courtney Venez, I interview wonderful comedians and game industry friends about these memories. Check us out wherever you get your podcasts, and maybe someday you'll call me by your game. I don't think it takes away the game's pass repricing, but it certainly... And it lessens that, that blow, though, you know? Yeah, it, what it does is it changes the conversation. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, instead of talking about the Games Pass pricing model, everyone's talking about all these new, all these newly accessible Call of Duty games on Games Pass. Isn't that amazing? It kind of just spins the story off in a different way, and they seem to be almost impossible of wrapping things up as good news at the moment, which I find odd for a company of that size. They must have in-house and access to out-of-house some of the biggest and best names in PR. Not only brands, but individuals. Easily. But then, like, you see Microsoft. Microsoft doesn't have to do PR. They're just a successful company. Like, yeah. they, you don't, they don't have to advertise Windows. Windows is just going to be on basically 75% of computers. They don't have to advertise, like, micro, like, Microsoft Office. It's on every single computer at this point. Like, they they haven't had to do PR in, like, 30 years. And it Not shows. Not like others do it, you know. Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, like when a big windows update comes out like windows 8 you know or windows 10 windows 11 now right now like they do small minor commercials for windows 11 and then they mm-hmm. just let those go because they're a majority of new devices already you know yeah every device not not an apple basically they're on so i'm like but they don't have that, to do that. that gives them a quite a decent chunk of excuse to get behind i, I and i kind of see it but the xbox brand has been around for 24 years now and they've had a pr problem too though i'm like think about think about like the compare and i don't want to make this a playstation versus xbox war but like one thing playstation does extremely well when god of war was coming out when spider-man was coming out when like ghost of tsushima was coming out the last of us they advertised the hell out of that thing from sporting events all the way to like i guess you could say real live spectator events it's like they had a god of war, a giant god of war, um, the Leviathan axe. You know, like the yeah. in, I think it was over there in your neck of the woods. I'm like, they've had quite a few sort of static display pieces. Uh, oh, for sure, to do this sort of stuff, and they're always. It was a couple of weeks ago. They built a massive Astrobots playroom pinball thing that you could play on in Trafalgar mm-hmm. Square. I mean, maybe Xbox done something similar, but I scour the news sites on a daily, hourly basis to pull the hottest nuggets in for the show. I never see a thing from them. Did you do you remember one actual commercial for Hellblade this year? Because I don't. I don't. I know actually, the I know what the trailer looks like, but that yeah, was I don't because I hunted for seeing it. anything. Uh, I, maybe I saw, if I'm being honest, maybe I saw maybe a couple of bits or a, on a YouTube video, you know, a, a mid t, a mid roll, and maybe a pre roll, but yeah. not anything I could pin my hat on, and certainly not something of enough footage that made me go, wait, stop, hold up, what's this? Let me get into this. Let me be interested in this. That seems to be non-existent, and that. If I was one of their studios, I'd be super frustrated because it's I've put all this time and effort into it. We turned to our PR department and ultimately theirs, and they've done nothing. Man, it's you know, like I look at um play like God of War when God of War Ragnarok was upcoming. I couldn't turn on my TV for like five minutes without seeing a God of War commercial. Every it person got, in the UK was covered in it. You're absolutely I, right. It was everywhere. It was everywhere. And like I Nintendo does a pretty good job as well. I'm like they Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, they advertise that thing like crazy. Um Tears of like, the Kingdom, I definitely saw footage mm-hmm. of that again everywhere. Some of it on the on the internet, don't get me wrong, but some yeah, of it for on, sure. main, on old school mainstream media, which is yeah. probably how I saw it. Uh, but you have 
uh, there's a lot of people out there that are mainline gamers who don't know who the president of Nintendo is, nor the president of X, uh, nor the president of PlayStation, but they know Phil Spencer because Phil Spencer is always out there. Like he's the most out there gaming face for a major company there is at this moment. I feel like he came along and actually filled. I know he replaced. He he did. He does a very different job, but he kind of filled yeah. that Cliffy B space as well, where Xbox mm-hmm. kind of had. Cliffy B was kind of like their cool kid. He couldn't yeah. do any wrong. Every game he touched was amazing. He pulled the magic out of the hat three times. The guy was the prodigal son um, until he wasn't. And then they kind of didn't have that kind of cool character kicking around. I know some people are going to write and say, oh, what about this guy? He ain't, he's not cool. Cliffy B is cool. Uncle Phil had a little bit of that Cliffy B magic about of him. But Xbox PR and himself have turned it into a mess. He he was the everyman. He was the ev- the the gamer that gamers could relate to, you know, because yeah, like totally they agree. They advertise him as, oh, he's one of you. He is. He plays games just like you. He's still to this day, like you can find clips of him for some reason playing Fallout 76. But it is like he's a gamer through and through. But what has that front forward face gotten them? Because like you can almost argue that that PlayStation has this mystique about them because they they say less. They say mm. less and they never step on the rake because they don't say anything. It's like yeah. when they so when they do speak, it sounds the words resonate more like it sounds like there's a lot of importance coming coming from them. It's like when Nintendo people are so starved for directs, they're so starved for a Miyamoto and, and all those people to actually like say something. So when they do, it feels like the whole forest just quiets down and listens to like them yeah. around there. It's like you you seen Lord of the Rings. You remember when the ants congregated? And such yeah. like that, and they were talking forever, and the hobbits were just like bored at first. Like they were, it was magic listening to them at first, and then they got bored halfway through. That Xbox is like those ants, and they they talk forever, but they don't really. They talk in circles, and very few act, very much little action is done. It's like that's it. It's like they need better PR. They need better. They need something. So, to, to so talk to me. Let's bring this back to the Games Pass issue in hand. This price increase. <laughs> I think I got halfway to asking you before, but is this too much or is it three pound on everyone's again? Because Xbox seems to trip itself up most severely on its own fans. They're the ones who cause the biggest furor. I'm not, I'm not talking like the casual who plays a little bit of MLB. No, the it's hardcore. The, the hardcore. The fans that they've curried since the original Xbox. They're the ones who are most disappointed. They're the ones who are the most vocal. Bringing it back down to the value thing, is it that big a deal, $3 a month? Yeah, it kind of is. It's like three dollars a month, and the explanation is you're just going to get Call of Duty. This is because Call of Duty is coming to Game Pass. Like that is so. I'm like, for the people who play Call of Duty, yay, hooray! I don't have to go out and pay the seventy dollars for Call of Duty this year. But for the people who don't don't actively play Call of Duty, you're paying the Call of Duty tax right now. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, you are you you legitimately are. Call of Duty is the biggest franchise in the world financially every single year and it's not it's a lot of the times it's not even close so i'm like hogwarts legacy was like one of the rare anomalies there but like yeah this is like the call of duty tax that everyone else is paying for so i'm like if you're one of those people who are like yay call of duty is coming to game pass or i'll finally get to play call of duty because i didn't want to buy it you know like this is a victory for you if you're not one of those people then the roost is coming to roast and you're and you're hoping that hey once again i'm hoping that xbox is going to produce like great games in the future because you know i'm not getting diddly squat for it now <laughs> what, what what made you laugh the, the roost coming to roast oh <laughs> the roost wow, that's great <laughs> <laughs> not just one or two of the little flappy things all of them <laughs> no, the, all the roost is coming to roast. Tell this one. <laughs> no, and the whole little shebang. It's that. That's that's, that's got to be a Longhorn saying that. Oh it's yeah, got to be sure. a Longhorn saying. Yeah, I can hear him saying that in his pulpit. Uh, okay. <laughs> but what do you think? I mean, because I, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you where I tell you where I'm at. I tell uh-huh. you exactly where I'm at. Three bucks a month, not that bad. If nothing had changed, but things are changing. And Games Pass is starting to take on a little bit of a different shape. And once again, the lack of noise from Xbox 
causes confusion. I'm here primarily for access, unfettered, unrestricted access, to day and date games. That's why I'm here. There's been very few. And now you're changing the games pass, so I can't even get hold of them unless I open my subscription. In your face, Uncle Phil. Get on your soapbox and communicate to me why this uplift is worth it. Because you've been trying to get away with this for a long time. Let's look at it this way. You tried to put games on other consoles. We hated that. You yeah. rode back a little bit, although you managed to squeeze out four games. You probably went into the ballroom and went, that didn't go very well. No, Uncle Phil, it didn't go very well. It doesn't look like they're going to stomach us putting our games on other platforms that they feel they've kind of paid for and invested in. Fair play, what else can we do? Well, we can rip Games Pass apart. Oh, well, that's not going to make them happy either. Right now, if they want to be happy playing Xbox games, we need to be here next year. So we're going to raise the price of Games Pass and they're going to have to stomach it because we can't keep... This is quite obviously to me a very clear indication Games Pass, the experiment, the great experiment, is failing or has failed. The row back from cancelling it altogether would kill the brand. I Here's the thing. I... I think it's still a good idea, and I still think it would be profitable. It's a it's great just... idea, but they need a critical mass. And PlayStation's got the consoles on the ground to fulfill the critical mass of subscribers, mm -hmm. but they can't. No, they can't. It, this okay, so this is revisionist history, is what I'm about to say. But like this, all this would have been stomached a lot easier if like. If Redfall was a nine out nine out of ten, if Starfield yeah. was a nine out of ten, if yeah. like all if they were coming out with banger after banger exclusive first party game lineups to where you're like, I can't miss out on this, to where instead, you know, like now we're looking at a lineup that if Bobby was here, we me and him would probably call it mid. It's a mid middle of the road lineup. They have some that are good, some that are great, a lot of live service. But there's nothing that makes you want to stop and stare at your Xbox and say, I'm buying, yeah, I'm investing into Game Pass or I'm buying that Xbox and I want to put that bad boy right there. That I have or to even, buy I'll that honest, bad boy. Right there. Even to ad adopt the old model that seems to be very forgotten on the Xbox platform, although they may be trying to encourage it. I just want to buy it. I want to own it. I want it physical in my hand. I'll pay you 79 bucks for it. I don't care. That that model is gone for them. It's gone. To get an yeah. Xbox gamer and right revved up to spend the money, I can't see it happening. It's almost become, you talked about PlayStation having mystique, and in a way, they're anti-consumer. They're up there charging oh, for sure. fortunes for all of it. But there's something about that that it feels like you, it's, it's, I don't know what it is that they're doing, but that feels okay. It but makes looked, it feel like a big time event, man. It's like, it is the equivalent of you watching a Disney Plus show and then going out in two weeks and going to pay, spend your hard on money and watch Deadpool and Wolverine. That Deadpool and Wolverine movie feels like an event at the end of this month versus Star Wars Acolyte, which is on on Disney Plus right now. It feels just like a bland show. And it's not because of the quality or anything like that. It's just because it's readily available. It's on Disney Plus. They, you know, like it just feels like that. It's like it's the equivalent of a show dropping all of its episodes all at once versus a show dropping a weekly episode. House of the Dragon is a good example right now where everyone after this latest episode is salivating for next week's episode mm -hmm. versus another show like a Netflix show where they drop all their episodes all at once. And you're like, OK, I can mow through this in a weekend. It's no longer special. No. Yeah, you're right. I, I mean, every now and then you get that magical program that you're like, oh, I really enjoyed that. That was magical. But the very consumption of it dirtied it up at the front end. So that led Like Fallout. Like Fallout, Fallout is, is a good example. I'm like, Fallout, if they would have spaced that on a weekly basis right now, we might have just now been getting the season finale of Fallout, but everyone would be still talking about it Think of for about three media months. media noise. We had an explosion in like as you say a weekend and everyone mm -hmm. stumbled on it and went oh my god this is great yeah if that was spaced out the noise on social media of the hype i mean i got bored of seeing people women pop up my instagram in a fallout suit with a booby hanging out 
You know, it was everywhere. <laughs> yeah. If that had been spread over six weeks, I don't even know what we'd be seeing on the socials right now, but there'd be people selling their children for the next episode, quite rightly, because it was that good. It mm-hmm. was. But, maybe, but there's maybe something... We, maybe a new Fallout episode's worth biscuit, but not a child. <laughs> My wife would disagree. <laughs> My wife would be the other <laughs> way around. But no... <laughs> But no, it's like there's something, there's a mystique about paying a high dollar fortune about Nintendo has made like a, a king's ransom off of charging you 40 to $60 off of a game you already owned. Mm-hmm. Like because that price is there, it adds value to it. It's almost like it, it's smart water did this years ago when they came out. It was just another bottle of water, you know, like, but then they put smart in front of it. They charged almost like 300% more than a typical bottle of water. And it felt prestigious at the time, yeah. you know, it did. It, no, you're it did. Right. It did. And it still does have that mystique to it. Now, mm-hmm. do you think as we talk about the brands and the, the things that they've done, are we saying that Xbox has caused itself irreparable damage by being the Costco of consoles? Not because the quality of the games they put out is is cheap or, or weak in any way. Well, you know, critical reviews are up and down across oh, what the they are, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Does it... <sighs> if they would have came out and all their games... Th- this business model would have worked if all the games were a 9 or 9 out of 10. I think they've placed that gamble on, we're going to... we. We're buying a lot of these studios that are prestigious all on their own, or at least done prestigious things. And we're gambling that they're going to produce blockbusters. And one that was kind of like a foolish gamble because like every every studio has flops, like everyone's going to have that miss. And it just so happens their miss came during the acquisition season. And then two, you picked up the wrong studios to have that expectation because like a lot of the studios that they picked up make niche franchises niche yeah. titles to where like if you wanted that you go buy don't buy a studio go buy ips like i i think embracer group is being dogged out of this world but in what embracer group was doing was kind of intelligent of like hey we don't necessarily want a studio we would just want tomb raider we just want last of us and i think or we just want lord of the rings i'm sorry not last of us but like that's Kind of, and then you bring your own studio and you say, "Hey, make a high-profile game around this IP, a recognizable IP." Right now, you bought the Dishonored people and said, "Hey, stop making Dishonored, make something very similar, but then make it about vampires, make it kind of live service, kind of not live service." You know, mm-hmm. it's never and work. No, it never but was. To it's my, like- my original point of Xbox in the vein of trying to make gaming affordable for everyone, have they made themselves look like the poor man's machine in a race where they already were already in that position? Have they made it worse for themselves? In a way, yes, but it's like, I think if they would have had those high profile titles, it would, it wouldn't have made it seem like that. It would have made it seem like, Hey, we're leading the future with the way everyone's going to consume games now versus like when you have those, I'm just going to be frank and say it. When you have those B to C and D level games, it becomes, oh, this is a great value style of a collection of like good games, but nothing is like high profile except the games you've already played before. I think that's where it would have set in. Like it, H- HBO Max, for instance, I and to bring this back to a good analogy here is like, HBO Max is the same streaming service as everything else, but they produce high content, so it feels special. They produce a litany of shows that people stop and it's appointment viewing, whether you, Succession, Barry, The Last of Us, Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon. They produce high quality enough to where people, even though it's a streaming service, look at them in a different pantheon than what they look at as Netflix's catalog. Yeah, And yeah, I think it's, it's a little bit of both. It's like, yes, you did dilute your brand by making you yourself like a great value for everyone, but you also diluted your brand by not giving people a high cal- enough high caliber catalogs to where even with this new model, you're actually selling selling to a And what a shame we live in a world where we're intelligent enough to know that we're getting ripped off by two brands. And we can see it, but we add mystique to that. 
and an exclusivity. And then on the brand that's trying to make gaming as affordable for everyone as possible by giving you just stacks of everything, but not really messaging it very well. We've attached to them a broken, almost cheap uh, label, which in any world other than gaming would make no sense whatsoever. I think we're a very hard customer base to please just because we're so diverse. You know, your game is different to my game, is different to Matey Down the Street's game, is is different to Lady Up the Street's idea of what a game should be. And our interactions with the consoles over the years has literally sculpted us into these weird little goblins, really, that are here to trip up these mega multinational brands by saying we want one thing and then doing... Exactly the opposite, Seb. What? What's going our gener- on? Our us? generation's the dumb one, though. By the by the way, George, it's, it's our generations that are the dumb ones. Because like the new generation, they're they look at a value proposition as like I I don't want to play just on one console. I want to play on everything. Like I am like I want to play on the phone because I have the phone the most. I'm like they don't care about all this, you mm-hmm. know. And then even more so, it's like this is why if you're reading like a lot of documents and such like that lately or a lot of news stories, this is why that handheld race right now is becoming so big. It's because a lot of people realize this and they're just jumping to what they feel like is the, their safest bet. And that's handheld PCs now. And like, because they could still get their console like experience in the form that they like it. But then the, they don't care about prices because price and PC is going to be dirt low anyways, you know? The first person that could nail that, I mean, you could argue Nintendo have already done it, but out of Xbox yeah, then, and PlayStation, mm-hmm. if one of those can nail the home experience, the handheld experience, no compromise, but still feel like they're getting a PS6, that's the step for me where I'm going to feel a bit wrong-footed. Because if I end up with the PS6 being basically a portable PS5, as amazing as that is, I'll be done with it by then and looking for that generational leap that we were starved of this time round. What is the general what is the generational leap for you? What is that next step up, up that makes you feel like well here's the thing. I, I wanna argue, I wanna bring that back a little bit. What was the generational leap for the PS4 to the PS5 that you were looking for? I think that we were starved of it partially, but I was looking to sit down and play a PS5 game and go, yeah, do you know what? That wasn't achievable on the PS4. Because of the crossover, because of COVID, and I've even looked into the history of it, this deep into the PS4, we were still getting games that released on PS3. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why all of a sudden it's become an issue. I think because some of the early adopters of the next generation of gaming consoles at the time, PS5 and Series X, Series S, probably felt a bit seen off because they looked at the consoles their friends had, the last generation, and felt like they weren't actually getting anything for the £600 they'd thrown down. I think it took probably until Returnal for PlayStation to say, actually, here's a game that looks good. It's double A in house, but do you know what? It could probably even, yeah, double A in house, but do you know what? It looked great. It felt great. It felt snappy. The load times are there. That felt good. Maybe Ratchet and Clank was the next one that you kind of thought, yeah, okay, it's not my cup okay, of tea. Baby. Mm-hmm. For K okay, baby, it's not my cup of tea per se, but I enjoyed playing it and it did look great. It looked really good. Um, and a marked improvement on Ratchet and Clank's last outing, which was the PlayStation 4 reboot of the original game. Re-telling. I think so. I think that's a good example because I think that one is a good graphical leap, but also I think more importantly, it is a good hard drive leap. It's a good gra- it's a good technical leap. It's yeah. because like and, and digital, fa- digital, so digital foundry have been come on and mm-hmm. sort of poured a little bit of cold water on the whole SSD scenario to make that yeah. what it is. But let's face it, it definitely helped and it definitely made it easy for them to be able to perform those magical tricks. Um, even if there were tricks, it, it still is wondrous that in this generation it's in between load times you don't pick up your phone anymore like it's very rare that you you go for your phone versus like that ps3 generation it's like if i was playing red dead you know i would have picked up my phone or the ps4 generation included like red dead redemption i was going from place to place and i just pick up my phone while the 30 seconds were going on and such like that yeah it's you spend more time gaming now than you did back then it's just 
I mean, again, that, I, you know, I, th- I think that's true. Yeah. Um, but the handheld gaming is going to be a compromise. And what I want to see from, if I'm going to throw down hard on what they dress up as PS6, unless that's, you know, like Portal, I don't mind Portal so much because I've got my PS5. That's great. I know what it okay. can do. Portal shares the graphics to a screen so I can play it on the go, on the go or somewhere mm-hmm. else or in another room. Perfect. All right. That's, but I'm not losing graphical fidelity to do that. But if we ended up with a PS6 basically being a portable PS5, we already have tapped out on the graphical capabilities, really, of that machine. So it leaves us wanting for a whole other generation where we're kind of going, oh, but only if we... And then what are we all playing? A massive library of PS4 games that are 10, 20 years old at that point? I mean, come on, guys. I think me and you talked about this game earlier, and I think that's... CD Projekt Red has done something that a lot of other developers, I think, are going to take note of. And that is that seamlessness of like you walk up to a person, you talk to them and it doesn't lock you into talking with them because you can walk just you can just back away. You can't do that in the Elder Scrolls game, you know, like you and also like story progression happens in real time in the sense that like for you to progress a mission in starfield for instance you have to go get that mission and then you have to go back and tell them you complete that mission and starfield like with their technology with the way they have that game or with um cyberpunk with their technology with the way they have that game set up it's like they take advantage of the ssd in the form of like you finish that mission and immediately once you're at that area they give you a call they Mm -hmm. just give you a call and they say the mission is complete and i think it's not necessarily graphics is going to be the next leap it's going to be intelligent use of what the game is actually going to do with that hard drive with the technology with everything like that is going AI to take everything well. to the next I mean, level that's, that's oh yeah for sure gaps in npc conversations that we never had the privilege of before and ray tracing and draw distance i'm like ai is doing a lot of that work now so i'm like it's i think like more intelligent use of what came before is going to be the big leap forward versus i think graphical fidelity well, I'll tell you one thing, Seb. This has been a long, interesting, meandering story. I would love to <laughs> yeah, know what sure. everyone at home's thoughts are on this, and, and please feel free to message in. If they wanted to get in touch and say, hey, do you know what? I'm all on board for this handheld PS6, guys. I don't even care if it's no more powerful than a PS2. This is what I'm all about. Or if you want to argue the merits of the refreshed price of Games Pass, or you happen to want to be able to uh, contribute to Pastor Longhorn's commune, how would they... Get in touch with us, Seb. All right, so here these are very specific instructions right now. If you're, we do have this place called the Discord, but we're only going to get Discord messages from Little Larry and the Compound. Little Larry is the one who basically fun, we funnel all the information through <laughs> on the outside world through Little Larry. So like now, like if you want to send us a specific message, you're going to have to go out by Carrier Pigeon and teach that Carrier Pigeon how to send messages, or at least send messages and put it to the UCP Compound. And then when it gets to the UCP compound, we can actually read it versus the funneling, (laughs) the messages that are being conveyed through Little Larry. But if you do want Little Larry to read those messages to us, you can tell us what we missed and give us any opinions on everything by basically reaching out through our Discord, the UCP Discord. You can email us at the questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com. You can DM us at the Instagram or the Twitter and, you know, Send the carrier pigeons. George, did I miss anything? No, you didn't. You were absolutely resplendent in all your reflected glory. You read that like a king. Um, I looked at you and wondered if I would I had anointed the wrong man because obviously last night was Pastor Longhorn's anointing in front of his alien overlords. Now, what I witnessed last night, I don't know if you had a little bit too much Kool-Aid and blacked out, but during about one and three o'clock in the morning, a human sacrifice was called for. Now Pulled to the lamb style. Y- yeah, big time. And I was like, oh, crikey, is it going to be me? Because I'm new here. And I was going to give you a nudge to wake you up. And then our GT stood up and I was like, oh, no. Why is he doing this? He had piles. So he's readjusting his back passage. He sat down. Pass along the said, if there's no volunteers then it's this man. And I can't really describe what I saw, but like a a burning wooden UFO was 
lowered from the air. Inside it was a collective ball of light that when I looked at it, it took on a thousand faces, but the face I recognized was Stingray. <laughs> Passed I didn't know long- where you were going with this. If I was honest, I was passed, like- passed a Longhorn from what I saw last night, and I have to admit, I'm choking up a little bit because Ray's been with us since we were kids. He's probably the most recognizable thing about the show. Ray has got more followers than me. And I, I witnessed Ray ended. Well, I don't know how you end a ball of light, Seb, but he's gone. And in that ball of light was a smaller ball of light, maybe with more intensity, but definitely smaller. And I saw like a thousand different faces, but one of the faces I recognized was Wayne. Oh, no, little Wayne. He's so young and innocent. I don't know what he's ever done. Wayne, like we've done beastly things to him ourselves, but what Pastor Longhorn did to the Ray boys was unforgivable. I mean, what can you expect, though? I mean, their cousin, you know, Country Ray came in in like a ball of fury and, and basically stole me from the compound. There had to be consequences. Consequences had to be had. Well, there was, there was well, to that end, it's time for a peek in what we affectionately call Longhorn's, Longhorn's boot. <laughs> Longhorn's trunk. <laughs> Whilst nestled between some counterfeit religious texts and a dodgy copy of Battle for uh Battle for Earth, Battlefield Earth this week. These I'm sorry guys, I'm done. But let's get this out of the way. These are new release highlights of the week, July 14th, July 21st, 2020, 2024. <laughs> 2020, 2024. Oh, George's new mixtape coming out this week. Everyone, you know, listeners, these are going to be out on digital or physical or will be by the time this podcast is in your feed or it could be region dependent. I don't, so I don't know what happened. Back. I think I turned into like an auctioneer. Yeah. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, That actually felt quite realistic. I think you missed your calling, man. <laughs> I think you missed your calling. <laughs> I'm not saying what you're doing now ain't working, but I think I think you had a, a career there that you kind of missed out on. Well, it, well it's a sub average podcast that I'm pinning all my hopes onto. I have done for five years now. I was hoping to be retired. I was hoping to have a bigger compound than Logan Paul. No, 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 man. This and now, is... I'm a, now I'm a cult member in what can only be described as probably the Xbox of cults. It's pretty low brand. It was cheap to get in. Uh, they keep giving away all our perks to people as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know what to do with myself. Thing is, with Pastor Longhorn, is he enters silently and he leaves silently. Um, but this week I'm going to ask you, what's Pastor Longhorn wearing? Oh man, this this masochist, this cult cult leader, <laughs> this diabolical man. <laughs> Came into the congregation of the day with Jesus sandals on, with a long with a long robe that basically had a sign on the back that says "Praise me or else." And wow. yeah, for sure, "Praise me or else." And then he has a almost like a pulp pulp like style hat on, and such like that. And you know, I you know he looks kind of religiously like a religious leader in zealot, but then he has like the sleeves cut out of his like robe sometimes. And he's just got these little one arms bigger than the other. I don't know if you notice this, but I can't take my eyes off of it. He's got this one eyes. He built uh, in one arm. He's built like Popeye, the sailor man. And another one, he's just, he's got this little twiggly, like scraggedy arm. I, and it bothers I never me. saw this law for coming for Longhorn, but I love it. <laughs> it, it bothers me. Cause I'm like, I, I, I tell you, I'm scared to all that is holy that I'm going to get slapped by that strong arm one day and just die. Like, you're going to slap long the Longhorn strong body. arm is yeah. what keeps this place in check. If it you really got is. from the cotton arm, it mean nothing. But the strong arm, I don't know, it made you feel like it was Tuesday when it was a, probably a Thursday afternoon. He just got that one big Popeye the Sailor Man like arm and the other one, he kind of looks like that little guy from Scary Movie 2, the little butler. But like, 
it is it, <laughs> it is depraved, man. It really is. George, have, what have you seen past the Longhorn looking like lately around the combat? Well, you know, I mainly spend most of my time with my nose pressed hard up against the chain link fence, looking outside <laughs> for, for guidance or any reality, because I, I don't even know what's real anymore, apart from what Pastor tells me. Anyway, the other day, the other I, day. I saw Pat. Yeah. The other day, I saw Pastor Longhorn cutting around on what looks like the salt flats that surrounds us on a Segway. Now, on this Segway, he was wearing a croc, uh, like a, a tie-dye croc over his manhood. He was barefooted. Um, and in his, his hair, he had round John Lennon. In his Over his eyes, he had round John Lennon sunglasses. And in his hair, he had just like a strip of tie-dye that he'd tied off to keep his, his long, luscious, bountiful locks out of his... Beady little eyes. So, did you see his strong arm? When he was strong arm? I just saw him travel from right to left. Okay, I think you, he orchestrates you. his body to me in a way where I never see his weak arm. Okay, that, that during, makes sense. During my interview process with him, which took over 48 hours of continuous confession from me, mm-hmm. and blackmail by him, and threatened threats to my family, I think he recognized that I could bring him down, but he also recognized, he said this to me. He said, I recognize strength in you. He touched my shoulder and I felt, I felt almost okay with him killing Ray and Ray and Wayne. I'll be honest. Almost, almost, almost. But then I don't know. He gives these threats sometimes. And then he caresses your cheek with that big, strong, (laughs) It's, it's the delivery of it, you know? It's the delivery. Because <laughs> he's like, he threatens you and he just caresses your cheek with that big, strong arm. T- <laughs> and I'm like, you don't know how to take it. You feel threatened, but you also feel safe and secure, you know? It's, <laughs> it's crazy. It's absolutely maddening. It's absolutely maddening. So everyone, this week, our first game we want to talk about is Nobody Wants to Die for PS5, Xbox, and PC. It's coming at you July 17th. Lose yourself in the dystopian world of New York in 20... Is that 20... No, 23, 30, 20, 20, 30, 23, 20, 30, 29, 29, 29, 29, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, uh, what am I going to take out of the strange pouch-like hey. pocket on the front of uh, Pastor sorry for, the, sorry for the sneeze, man. That The sack of potatoes yesterday was located right next to the bag of pepper. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sneezing ever since. Don't let Pastor Longhorn hear you. We think sneezing is a form of weakness. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You know, even though I'm in, I'm fear for my life on a day to day basis. I'm actually enjoying living in the commune. Um, Flintlock Siege of Dawn, PS5, Xbox Series X, and PC, July 18th, 2024, from Games Studios A44, makers of Ashen, comes an explosive Souls like where gods and guns collide in a battle for the future of humanity. Hmm. And the last one is Schism um, for PS5. Is this. Nintendo Switch, the NS? Yeah, Nintendo Switch, Xbox. Yeah, PC. don't you worry about that. Yeah, I don't see that very often, so I'm like, oh. Those, I actually those. think this game is actually called Shim. Um, is it? Oh, yeah, there's no S right there. I don't know what I was reading. Man, but so, I feel like Shim. <laughs> no, we're going to leave it there. Tell me what it's about. <laughs> yeah, Shim. Is it? <laughs> it's coming July 18th. Um, Shim is the game about <laughs> jumping, <laughs> jumping from Shim shadow to shadow in a relaxing and lively environment this 3d platformer takes elements of light and shadow and animation and adds them directly to the gameplay delivering an experience that you will only find in skim <laughs> skim shim 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 i'm actually i'm going to actually say to pastor longhorn i want this to be my deity of the week if i'm honest 
Uh, shim, yeah, I'm okay. going to get behind it. It sounds interesting. The art style is very, you know, attention grabbing. Looks interesting. It's simple but uh, effective. Um, yeah, I, um, you know, I there's two games. Why don't you week. rustle up a code for that one and come at me next week with a shim review? It might be hard to do, but I'll use all all my persuasion powers to see if I can do it. Send the long horn in. I'll give them the long horns. Yeah, <laughs> deploy the long horn. <laughs> Did you know on the? Did you see? By the way, they're they're working on the com the commune flag. It's just going to be one strong arm <laughs> with long horns attached to it to the bicep. Yeah, for sure to the bicep, <laughs> just to the bicep. But everyone, I think out of these, uh, like out of these three games, you really can't go wrong. I think two of these for sure. You know, I've actually personally, you know, went hands on with before, and I got to say, two of these are really good. But I think for the most part, I'm going to be playing the last one we spoke about quite a bit. Shim. Yeah, Shim. Shim, Shim, Shim. Message in, let us know how to pronounce that. We need it phonetically as well because we're dumb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and little Larry's communication of what he's seen on the Discord sometimes, as animated, as interesting as it is, is a bit confusing. With Pass Along Horn gone, I look down and all I see is the corner of page 24 from his holy book. The only legible lines on there are, you shoulda, woulda, coulda. I don't know what that's all about, but uh, certainly probably a page about regret. You better learn what it's about if you want Jello this week. It's just another thing to do, isn't it? But uh, okay, he quizzes us to get food. We have to get food, but through the quizzes. I I work on the basis that at least one thing I say during his quiz, I get right. I don't know okay. what it is I've said because I I always get food. Oh, that's now, good. The food level that I'm on, I don't. No one's allowed to talk about their food levels, but seeing as we're hiding in a place where maybe Longhorn can't hear us, yeah, I'm going to be cheeky. I'm not even going to call him Pass Along. I'm just going to call him Longhorn. Okay. Mm -hmm. My food is the cheese secretions from between his toes. <laughs> you caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't even know the words foot cheese. Yeah. yeah well. What, you're on, what, something different? What are you eating if I'm eating that? I, I get sliced potatoes that come out of a can. You really are his number two. This is how he creates jealousy. Well, This is why we're not allowed to talk about what we've been eating, by the way. This is why we're not allowed to talk about <laughs> this, what we've been eating. This yeah. is directly why. Because I know some people would think being able to get that close to past a long horn that you're literally licking between his toes. I mean, he is Talacton's chosen person on Earth. What could be a better privilege than that? So who's closer, me or you? I I have no idea. I have it on good authority, though, that someone who, who has initials in their name is coming up with a shank. <laughs> he's tired of this. He's ready for a change. <laughs> you say that next week, he'll come in saying, um, and, Je <laughs> and being past the Longhorns sort of blooming valet or butler or something. And before we leave the recording room here at, this den of iniquity that is Pass Along Horns Combine. I must turn to you, sir, after another great rip roaring episode in your company. Thank you. Because you make this you make this combine good. Um what are you hoping to play? Um I'm gonna be playing a little bit of um Flint uh Flintlock Siege of Dawn. Um I I wonder if this is going to nail everything that I want it to because even though this game says it's like souls like when I went hands on it had some it had some reminiscent feelings of God of War Ragnarok in some of the gameplay, and then it also felt Arkham-y in some styles. So I feel like everyone uses that as almost like a buzzword, even though it, you know, like I this agree. didn't feel this I didn't feel, feel like so that saying is the Emperor's new clothes that you just people throw at any game now to get that sort of hardcore community into it. I've been looking at this for some time because I'm into history and stuff and I like the idea of flintlocks, but uh, the reality of this game is something far different from what my fantasy was. Yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so far removed from what I hope my fantasy was about it, but you know, it's a great looking game. I guess some of the elements of it are the retreading of the universe each time that you take a different you know, stab at it, I suppose, but I'm pleased to hear what, what you got a code for that or what's going on. Yeah, we'll be talking about it in the upcoming, in, probably in next week's, unless we have a guest. If we have a guest, then I'll talk about it the week after. But like, yeah, that one, it does remind me a little bit of AC mi mixed in with God of War Ragnarok a little bit. Mm -hmm. It does 
there is some souls like mechanics of like you having to really get your timing down as far as the combat goes, but it still feels more like over the shoulder God of War Ragnarok to me than it does. Like, like you said, I just think that Metroidvania, Souls like these are all names that are thrown at games with like the very merest good buzzwords. Link. Yeah, they're good buzzwords that sell or probably peak interest in a crap ton of games. Mm-hmm. And- normally don't deserve it is that all you're going to be playing sounds like a good uh, game to submerge yourself into or you got something else yeah i'm gonna be playing that in scheme 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 you know, scheme, scheme. scheme yeah if, if i can use my powers of persuasion to get code for that one so I, like those two sound like they're two different sides of, listen your of, powers of persuasion got us in to this place they're gonna get us out of this place i'll tell you one thing they're gonna secure a code for scheme yeah we'll see we'll see everyone stay tuned for all that let us know what you're going to be playing this week in the discord by the way everyone yeah so, there's not enough of that is there people go no. i want to see i want to see meaty shots and uh, no i don't i don't want to see meat i want to i want to hear some really solid gameplay activity in that section this week give us gonna... give us that and then in the picture portion of the discord send us your screenshot as well we we want to do a and screenshot. why are you not putting hashtag fridge if you put hashtag fridge you're gonna get a sticker right yeah just put hashtag sure. fridge just do that everyone we want we, we kind of want i kind of want to see who's going to have the best screenshot game this week so give us Ooh. get this week give us your best screenshot your best screenshot of the game you're currently playing. And the winner might even get a special prize. So everyone, keep on the, give us your screenshot. Tell us what you've been playing. And you know, George, before we go, we used to, you know, we used to say what video, you know, what video we're gonna be recommending. Yeah, what we're gonna to do everyone with Longhorn. Week. We're not we're doing that anymore. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I want I wanna you wanna, I wanna, you wanna, I wanna do broach it. something. Yeah, I wanna broach something to you. Okay. All right, what game do you feel like you want more time with, but you're probably not going to play this week? That you want more time with, but you're probably not, you're just not going to get to it. Farming Simulator. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Mine's Final Fantasy VII. I, I have that thing loaded up on my PlayStation upstairs, and I'm not going to touch it. I know I'm not going to, but I, in my mind, I want to. Oh, dude, I filled the console up with a load of games that I was like, yeah, portal game, portal game, portal game, downloaded them all. And then I sat there a bit later on and I was like, hang on a minute, delete. You know, I'm going to play yeah, that. Never. Delete. Why is that a good portal game? Delete. And the hard drive got slimmed right down to about two games. <laughs> got absolutely <laughs> savaged after I'd gone through like a connoisseur picking all these games to download that I could either play for the first time or replay on portal. And it was like, why am I being so dumb? Um, Amazon has like the Amazon Prime Day coming up, and I yeah. I'll, every Prime Day I always look at like getting an external hard drive for my PlayStation Five, and I think to myself, I'm like, you don't play the games you already have installed on that bad boy. You don't need to expand the the waste. I, end, so I, to speak. I bizarrely chucked. Uh, I was in a game in the UK. Some interesting news coming out about them. They're not taking pre-orders on new games anymore. They've cancelled their sort of rewards program. I don't know what the future looks like for them, but I was in there and up on the shelf was what I would call a, an impulse purchase, 120 bucks. There was a, a PS5 endorsed SSD. I thought, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll get that. I'll get that gig. Yeah, that's what I need. Have I really filled it, used it, touched it? <laughs> no. No, for sure not. For sure not. I feel like I'm still in the realm of probably doing one game then deleting it and doing another game deleting it uh, we've it gotten into the habit man i'm like we've gotten into the habit xbox is a little different for me because i'm like if for some reason game pass has made me feel like i have more storage than what i have and they also do the thing to where you could play the play off the cloud immediately mm. you don't have to download at least like 50 percent of the games so i can play it off the cloud and if i like it i just i might download it then if i, I don't mean, i'm never going to touch it the... again I mean, everyone else is already doing it and PlayStation drep- dress it up with a hat and everyone thinks it's new. But, you know, that's one of the things that I've noticed for premium. Like, I'll go on there, but like, oh, mm-hmm. game. Oh, I'll download it. I'll have to take ages. Stream. Mmm, stream. Mmm. But that ends up being a compromise. And if you like it, you're going to download it, but you can't keep playing it on the cloud. Well, I suppose you could, but the internet quality drops. Then you end up playing what looks like a Lego mosaic. Yeah, it's, it's nice that you get to just dip straight into it, but some of the compromises you make along the way, 
I don't think they're worth it. Um, in terms of what I'm going to play, I want to play a bit of Farming Simulator, probably won't. I want to play um, some Cyberpunk. Hopefully I will. Um, other than that, I'm just kind of bimbling between games at the moment, just waiting for something that piques my interest. Watched another inside trailer or behind the scenes video of uh, Star Wars Outlaws. Piqued my interest. Triple. It looks better. It looks better this this time around. It Every really time does. it looks better and better and better. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, I'm impressed by that because it keep, not- I have to keep reminding myself this is an Ubisoft game. I, I really do. I have to keep because that that's the only thing that's going to keep my expectations from going to an unreal level to where like if this game comes out and it's a seven out of ten, I'm going to be heartbroken because like I'm ex- I, I'm just trying to do my best not to to get your levels to that high. Yeah. Or like today I looked at that video and was like, yeah, wow. And then then I thought to myself, stop doing this to yourself. You're going to build it up to be something in your mind that it can't be. Mm-hmm. you're going to build it up to be something that it can never be. It's basically Assassin's Creed with lightsabers. Chill out, dude. And that's exactly how I'm looking at it. Because I'm like, I do not... I think everyone and their mom, is because like that space fantasy is so desirable, Like everyone wants to have that seamless space experience. Like We want to have that. We we look for Starfield to be that. We, out, we look for Outlaws to be that. Neither one of them are probably going to be exactly what we want, but if someone could crack that code, they're gonna be they're gonna be printing money because Nomad Sky was supposed to be that too, and and they just didn't end up being that either. But if someone can nail that feeling of like space exploration, that open Nomad world, Sky nailed it for me. I can't believe I'm still defending this game five years. <laughs> it nailed it for me, but for everybody else, I don't know what they are expecting. It was never gonna be that, but you know they've probably ultimately got that in the end. Yeah. So. Yeah. It works I think out. I think everyone was expecting No Man's Sky to be almost like a fusion of what it is, but with Destiny. Yeah. You know, like I think they probably expecting what it is fused. I think what they were expecting there was like a proto Starfield. Yeah, for sure. I think you know, like a lot of people. I've heard a lot of people say No Man's Sky walked so that Starfield could also walk, and then No Man's Sky actually ran out, learned how to run afterwards. It's just it kind of feels like that. It's just. It, you, I think like for everything No Man's Sky is, it still isn't what a lot of the mainstream wants it to be. And I think that's sort of its big problem. Thing is, the mainstream hasn't got the time or patience for a game like that. No, I mean, it. What, what they want, they want GTA in space almost, is what a lot of people probably would look for. And yeah. Yeah, but anyways, that's a whole another podcast. Everyone, thank you so much for listening to this episode because well, we were about to we go let, into Before it. we let them leave the commune um, this week, they get the perk to leave, we have to stay. Let's say thank you to our Super wonderful listeners. supporters. Yeah, um, I don't know if you've got the list to hand. Um, but is I it can... the same as last week's? Because It is the same. Okay. No new names. I'm, I'm disappointed by that. Do you know what I expect to see on air any moment? The RGT fan club Supreme? No, no, no. Well, they're going to change their name to Supreme. I'm expecting to see Carlos on here any minute. And I'm also, like, where's Rampage Talk? I want to read his name out. I want to read these guys' names out on a weekly basis. I understand. I understand. I mean, they just got to read out. Let me see. But I want to read out the readout. Let me start off. Trestles of New York, thank you for your support. In every way, but especially this way, the monetary way. It makes a massive difference. And next up, we have Bada Bing Star. I, I noticed while I was off, you upset Tingle Tuna by calling him Tingle Turner. I'm so sorry, Tingle. I really <laughs> am. I'm so sorry. Mr. Tingle, sir, I'm so sorry. Tingle is what uh, Pastor Longhorn calls his right arm. Oh, no. <laughs> the, tingle, the Tingle slap. <laughs> That's his little weak arm. Yeah. Uh, who's next? All right. Um, Digital mug- Muggery is next. I think I was meant to read him, but anyway. Uh, Rice Space Monk. The Game of Gran? Gram. RGT was meant to change that back to Gram. RGT, it- man. I'm so sorry. You got, uh, man, y'all got me butchering these poor people's names. No, no. The Game of Gram. <laughs> the Gram and Gram. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> 
I think it makes it more listenable, if I'm honest. Up next, and thank you to everyone to this point, and still continuing to say thank you to everybody, we've got Bull Border. And then we've got Boba. And then we've got Scott Marathon Gaming. Then Seal Master Elliot. My red-headed stepson, who I love as much as my own child, Ginge. The legend Emma Sharp. No longer on the apps. Harvey Retro. Nowhere near Berlin. Such an iconic name. You need to get him on single player experience, by the way. He's the community manager for Forever Skies, an upcoming uh, open world experience. Sounds great. Come to me, Papa. Uh, Up next, the immortal Mumsy. Next up, we have the legendary group, the group that George is trying to hunt down because he wants all their names. This is... This is the RGT fan club. If you're in the RGT fan club and you're paying to support us on a monthly basis, right, one, you're a legend. Two, what can I do to swing you over to be be the George fan club? I don't have a lot. I think everyone's taken everything from me on this show, my dignity, whatever else I've got left, my dignity. Some would say that disappeared on episode one. Um, the clean undies. <laughs> anyway, Pete Brocklehurst, thank you for your support. Um, <laughs> Billy Marmite, Simon Pryke, thank you. Uh, and that means you've ended up with Fat Zangief that you've got to say in a sexual way. And the man, the myth, the legend, Fat Zangief. Oh my God. <laughs> We need to get this out. That was amazing. Much like myself, you take on the role of a character and it completely encompasses you. I saw you descend into what was basically one of the most sexual animals I've ever seen in human form. It was not aimed at me directly, but I'm not going to lie. There was a little bit of something going on down there that I haven't felt since Pastor Longhorn has been force feeding us bromide shakes since the day we got here, because that sort of action down there is not allowed on the spaceship, apparently. I was told at Burger King that I have that effect on people. It where? At Burger King. (laughs) (laughs) I just had to be sure that's what I'd heard. Well, we've said thank you to the people that support us, and we're very grateful to that. To all those that don't pay, you're still very welcome. The show will always be free. We would never take it from you. Not now. Not like this. Not after everything. Oh, my one last request. We are so unbelievably popular in California, yet no representation in the Discord. We barely have any American representation in uh, at all. If one of you could just reach out to me on DM, on X, Twitter, questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com. Some of you, I can tell from the stats, have been listening since day one. Question, why? Second question, what keeps you coming back? Is it the Ray? Because if it's the Ray, we can unkill him immediately. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to those people who are listening in California, though. We're sorry to everyone that listens but most intriguingly in california what do they make of all of this i am i have no idea so I'd to the people to listening in california i want to challenge you right in and tell me why you think your bloody burgers known as in and out is better than our water burgers i need to know what do you think is better why do you think in and out is better than water burger i because water burger here then be fighting words Give me five. <laughs> I tell you what, past the Longhorn has rubbed off you, on you. I would say <laughs> in the wrong way. <laughs> do, do you know he makes me lift weights just with one arm? He, he, I can't even lift weights with the other arm. You know, like <laughs> he's like you have to do curls with just you have to pick one arm and that's your curling arm. You can't do it with the other arm at all. Tag me in whatever AI image you've cooked up out there <laughs> on the Discord for Pastor Longhorn. I cannot wait to see the flood of images. I think that's probably all we have time for this week, Seb. Would you agree? Absolutely. 
Well, listeners, always thank you for your time. I look forward to the pleasure of speaking to you again next week. Until then, happy gaming. And remember, there's nothing wrong with being given the unofficial controller. It's what it's you, what do, you with do with it. It's what you do with it. See you guys. Bye, Roy. George and Seb rolling down the road. RGT riding shotgun a heavy load. Pastor Longhorn waiting to unfold. In El Paso, Texas tales been told. One arm big, a sight to see. Pastor preach, preach, set you free. George and Seb, they bend the knee. RGT nodding yes and glee. Join the cult in El Paso town. Where Pastor Longhorn's got his crown One arm high, the other down We're the wildest show around Sunday's hot, the desert air George and Seb, oh feel the glare Longhorn's words hang everywhere Salvation found without a care Sunday's hot, the desert air George and Seth both feel the glare Longhorn's words hang everywhere Salvation found without a care RGT plays a sacred tune Underneath